Okay, let's see if we can do this video in one shot. Um, I'm using GeoTracker and I just want to start kind of like right in the middle of a lesson. Uh, we're doing something called pin mode and uh, pin mode is a really cool interface for like moving meshes around to, to match your scene geometry. And I just want to show that when you left click, you add pins. If you right click, you remove pins. It's a really cool interface because you really only need two buttons and a mouse. To move the mesh around, you add one pin and you grab and move the pin, okay? In order to scale the, the model, you add two pins and then you move one pin away or closer to scale, okay? If you wanna rotate, then you add a third pin and you just like move it around, okay? It feels kind of weird at first, but for faces, um, you kind of want to pin like things like the corner of the eye or the nostril or the top of the ear or something. For vehicles, you want to pin corners or just certain, maybe like the middle of a wheel or something. So let me just quickly close this. I just want to talk about pinning because it's such an interesting interface. It's a little bit weird. It's easier if someone just explains it to you, but it's a big part of using GeoTracker. Okay, let me close this up. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin. I'm going to pin some geometry, and uh, let's just talk about the next section here. When you use the GeoTracker add-on, okay. Um, I will come back to this in a moment. Let me just show you how I pin. How I use the pin mode on this vehicle here, okay. So let's just. Let's just add a pin on the top of this back wheel and I'm just gonna move it to the top of the back wheel. Um, I created a little bit of geometry that is is roughly to scale, okay? So you can see that I created two pins. It's a little bit hard to see, so it's a little bit hard to see the wireframe. So all you have to do is scroll down here and just kind of adjust the brightness or, um, change the color here. Okay, I think green green's going to be fine. It's hard to see right now, but uh, you can see it. Maybe I can change the, the background image a little bit. Okay. Okay, that helps a little bit. All right, so now that I got two pins and they're kind of roughly corresponding to the image, then I can take a third marker and just like try to rotate it, okay? So I just wanna do this demonstration here. Um, obviously I'll spend a little bit more time, but this is kinda of how you get started, okay? Always just create and delete pins as needed. All right, now I'm gonna start from scratch. Uh, let's talk about something real quick. Okay, if you want to trim videos, if you want to edit videos, if you want to export an uh, image sequence using Blender, this is how you do it. Immediately go to the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a hashtag with a ball on it. Click that drop-down menu and switch to Video Sequencer. Okay, the Video Sequencer is where you're going to edit your videos and that's where you can kind of set up your exports, okay? Use Shift-A to add anything new. Okay, let's say I wanna add a movie. Got a QuickTime movie or um, video that I shot from my cell phone, it's in there, okay? In order to see the video, you gotta use this drop-down menu. I kinda wish that this was already on to Sequencer and Preview by default. And now you can see the video, okay? I'm middle mouse dragging my timeline around. My entire sequence is 250, but I think this video is a lot shorter, okay? So it's like 78 frames, 77 frames. You might wanna just like trim this down. Uh, 
use K to cut your video. And then you can just, you know, delete whatever section you want or don't want. Uh, when you're ready to export, it's pretty easy. You just use the output button. It looks like a printer and then decide your destination folder, decide if you want um, a video or if you want image sequences. For teaching, I highly recommend using JPEGs because PNGs are a lot bigger and if you're trying to transfer files over to your students, you want to keep the files as small as possible, especially if you're doing online teaching. Okay, anyway, um, that's how to use the video sequencer. When you're ready to render, you just go up to the render menu, choose render animation. Okay, let's get to the geo tracker. Okay, the geo tracker add on is made by a company called Keen Tools, and you'll see how to spell it in a moment. Make sure you go to your preferences. I'm using Blender 4.2 and uh, add-ons and extensions. This There's been some changes here. It's a little bit confusing. If, if you want to install a zip file, if you want to install your add-ons, um, you got to go over to this drop-down menu and choose install from disk. Okay. And then you install your Keen Tools uh, zip and you choose install online. Okay, you can't really see it here right now. Maybe I can uninstall it. But uh, anyway, it's pretty easy to understand. Don't choose install from disk in within the Keen Tools. Just go over to the add-ons, choose install from disk, choose the Keen Tools zip file, and then uh, you'll see a button that says install online. That allows Keen Tools to uh, kind of use all their tools. Uh, you need an internet connection, obviously, okay? All right, here we go. Um, I'm gonna do some geo tracking right now. And you know what? I'm gonna show how I would track this using Blender's tracker and uh, show how it's a good way to see the comparison between Blender's tracker, which is really good still, but how, how much more powerful and efficient geo tracker is, okay? All right, um, to use Blender's tracker, I'll use the movie clip editor. A little bit confusing there. I wish they would have just called it motion tracking, but I'm gonna bring in a JPEG sequence here. I hit A. Here's my JPEG sequence right away. I'm gonna check set seam frames. So it trims to my timeline. I kind of wish they had that button in the video sequence editor. Maybe they do and I just don't know about it. Uh, Right away, I'm going to detect features. I'll hit Control T. Uh, let me make sure I rewind with Shift left arrow. I'm going to hit Control T, and it's just going to track the all these features. Then I'll go over to. Um, let me just split my screen here. I want a 3D view. Okay. Uh, let me import in some geometry, okay? Okay, I got some geometry in here. And uh, I'll look through my, my camera by hitting zero on my numpad, or you can use tilde, view through camera. And then I'm gonna set up my background and what I'm going to do is in the upstairs section, I'll hit shift tilde and I'm just going to try to get my camera roughly to a similar view here. That's, that's close enough for now. Uh, okay, that's close enough for now. All right. 
I've tracked my features. I'm going to um, solve camera motion. And then I'm gonna set up tracking scene, which will export all that data to my camera. Check it out. Like there's my camera right now. And if I hit spacebar to play, the camera's not moving at all. But once I click set up tracking scene, all of a sudden that the tracking data is trying to simulate the camera motion. So let's just hide this ground plane real quick. And you know, there's a lot more work that has to be done, but that's that's how I would start with Blender's tracking. Okay. Now let me show you using GeoTracker. Okay, I've got my GeoTracker add-on, uh, my Keen Tools add-on, I should say. I created some geometry that's roughly to scale. I immediately switched to the GeoTracker tab, and let's take a look at my notes real quick. Okay, so. Um, when you load the clip, just look for anything that's red. Okay, so I load up my clip. That's the Escalade JPEG sequence. Um, geometry set already. I go over to the camera menu and I want to estimate my focal length. Okay, I shot it with my cell phone. I think the iPhone 12 is uh, 26 millimeters but I'm not so sure and I'm just gonna check estimate focal length. As far as tracking, I'm gonna choose camera because I want a moving camera. I don't want the geometry to move. And then I'm gonna start pin mode, okay? And so now this, you know, the lessons that I talked about early on with pin mode is now going to make sense. All right, so let's just put one pin on a wheel and I'm just gonna move it over because when you only have one pin, that's how you move your geometry. Then I'm gonna scale it by creating another pin and dragging it, so only using one mouse button. Now I'm gonna rotate, okay, it's kinda hard to see. All right, and uh, brighten that up, okay. I'm gonna rotate. Deleted this pin when I rotated. And I'm just going to do as fast of a job as possible here. Let's get rid of some of these pins. I actually did multiple iterations of this geometry. And at first I just dropped the cylinder in here for the wheel. Um, I found later that it was much more helpful to have a center spoke. So if you are trying to create some scene geometry that's a cylinder shape, create like a center spoke. Sorry for the delay here. All right. So if something looks really good, just pin it. So it stays stuck on. Um, if things then come off on, you know, use the right mouse button to get rid of pins. Okay, I'm not gonna spend any more time on this because I just wanna get to the tracking part. Okay, that's good enough for now. Uh, let's hide these notes. After you're done with pin mode, it's pretty simple. You just wanna start 
tracking. So I'm using the right arrow because I'm at frame one. Oh, I should have reanalyzed my footage probably. That's okay. Um, pretty much figured it out. And uh, now when I exit pin mode, I can look through my camera. That's going to be tilde view camera. And it's pretty tight. Okay, it's pretty tight. Um, what I can do now is bring in some animation or, or do some compositing. Let me uh, show you an example of what I did here. Okay, I brought in some animation here. Excuse me while my computer's thinking. Oh my God, 4.2. What are you doing to my computer? Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't wanna have to edit this video when I upload it to YouTube. So sorry about this. Um, Anyway, I'll put I'll put some chapter headings so you guys can jump around, but it'd be nice if you could see the composite here. Okay, I think that was it. Um, very quickly here, I'd like to just demonstrate something called a holdout shader. Shift A. Create a holdout shader. And going back to layout. And you can see the holdout shader just makes your geometry invisible. And of course, here's when I can kind of whoops make some slight adjustments to my geometry. I'll lower this a little bit. Okay. Just some slight adjustments like so. All right. So as you can see, GeoTracker is very, very powerful. It's an awesome add-on. I'm so glad I discovered it. And hopefully this video helps you guys figure out how to use Blender with your VFX uh, workflow. All right, thanks for watching.